John 8, 51. Amen, amen, dico vobis, si quis sermonem eum servaverit, mortem non videvit in aeterno. Truly, truly, I say to you, if someone will have kept my word, he will not see death forever. I translated this verse relatively literally because of our future perfect form here, but not necessarily idiomatically in English, and I'll explain why in a moment. What we have is the future perfect indicative in servawerit and the simple future indicative in widebet, which makes this what grammarians sometimes call a future more vivid construction, and that's as opposed to a future less vivid construction in which you'd have a subjunctive verb in each case, often called a should, would conditional. If this should be the case, then that would be the case, but the possibility that all of this is going to happen seems kind of remote. That's not what we have here. We have a case where these things are presented as certain facts. If this thing happens first, this thing will happen later. And the use of the future perfect underlines for us here that the speaker means to indicate that the verb in the protasis, that is the, the if clause, the first clause in the two clause conditional, every conditional has two clauses, of course, the if and then the then, so to speak, although of course lots of different variations are possible. That's the basic structure. So in that first clause, the protasis, if you use the future perfect indicative, you're saying, if this will have happened first, then this second thing will follow as a natural or inevitable result. Now, this is obscured in English because in English we tend to use simply the present indicative to translate sentences like this. So in English we say, if someone keeps, present tense, my word, my sermo, my logos, then he will not see death. Now in the second case there in English we would use a future tense as well, but in the first case we often use the present tense to indicate these kinds of conditional situations. In aeternum, by the way, is a nice translation of the Greek there. We can just say forever. Or, as most English translations do, we can sort of transpose this and say, by reversing the meaning, he will never see death. Of course, in English, we would not say, he will not see death forever. We would say, he will never see death more idiomatically. And at the beginning, though we skipped over it lightly, this is that famous truth-telling idiom that we associate so rightly with Jesus' speech in this gospel, truly, truly, I say to you. These are statements worth paying attention to.